Hi, this is Tony Reels, and today we are joined by Sandy Bowles. Actually, your name is interesting if I think of Bowles. <laughs> yeah, I've had people make that comment before. This is episode two of Divine Feminine Energy. Uh, throughout my work as a uh, regenerative detox specialist, I have the pleasure of talking with many, many amazing people. And Sandy was one of them. And when she talked to me about sound balancing, I was like, oh my God, we need to know more about that. <laughs> and she, um, she sent me her, um, her flyer and it actually had something that I was already going to use to introduce her more and what she is doing. It is like she writes here, people have used sound in the form of chanting, toning, bowls, bells, gongs, songs, and music for thousands of years to bring about an increase in health and well-being. Sound balancing brings a modern day twist through the use of tuning forks. And this is why I was so intrigued was in the tuning forks. I had never even considered that as, as something that you know could make a difference in our health. And as a detox specialist, that is all what I am about is what can help with our health. I know it is the food, it is you know, an alkaline lifestyle, but there are other things. There's magnetism, there are crystals, and there is frequencies. And so there is the sound and the sound balancing. So being as, as intrigued as I was and talking more to Sandy, she was generous enough to give me a free um, sound balancing with the tuning fork. And that was an hour long and rather interesting. And um, I, it's not the kind of sounds that, you know, I think are very pleasurable for our ears because I was like kind of cringed with the high sounds. Mm -hmm. But um, Cindy will explain more about it, how that, um, how that works. And um, that there is a different difference in what you hear and what you feel. Did, did, I, uh, did I say that correctly, Cindy? Yeah, you, you sure did. Uh, and, and what I would say is if you were here in person, you would not be bothered by the, by the tone of the forks. It's just that the sound tends to get distorted as it tries to go through all of the technology. So um, uh, what I didn't remember to tell you was that we need to turn the volume down or uh, don't listen to it with headphones if you do a distance session. Or if I do it on my phone, I think it's a, not quite as um, sort of brassy sounding. Um, but yeah, uh, did, so yeah. Now, can you tell me, how did you even get to this? How did you figure out that this could be a difference in, in our health, in, our, in how we feel? Well, uh, I think that I've always, as I've reflected back on my uh, rather twisty, turny career path, um, I think I've always had a, a, a passion for well-being, whether that's emotional well-being or physical well-being um, or uh, relationship well-being. So I've had a variety of, of um jobs and experiences with all of that. And I got to a place in my career, I was living in North Carolina, where the job that I'd had as a college administrator ended in a very difficult way. And I was ready to move from North Carolina to Austin, Texas, where I am now. And I had been listening to some lectures by a gentleman named Christopher Timms, who actually lives in Florida, in Melbourne. And uh, He's a mystery school and uh, does a variety of podcasts and classes and workshops uh, on many different things. No, oh, we seem to have lost sound. He had come, he had, usually he had done these sessions in person, but he transferred it so that. Uh, 
were um, stainless steel forks that were made in England. Unfortunately, that factory closed and uh, then the forks became inferior. So he switched to a US company um, that the, the forks are now made out of um, high grade stainless steel. So they're much more audible than the, the smaller forks that I had at first. Uh, but I got the forks, I learned the technique, I practiced on anybody and everybody, including myself, that I could snag into coming and lying down on the massage table that I have and, um, and giving this a try and really, really enjoyed it. Um, really kind of fell in love with the use of sound to, to bring about change. People loved it. Um, and as I went on, I, I was also working. So I was kind of juggling, doing this a little bit on the side and, and uh, working full time for a while. I was working seven days a week. So I was kind of mostly doing it on myself a lot of times, but, um, but getting as many people as I could. Um, and, and eventually, I actually learned a, a second technique. So I draw from two people's work. The second technique is called biofield tuning and that is um, taught by Eileen McCusick. And I can, um, I can talk, they're, they're very different. Sometimes I will just intuitively pull from one, com combine them a little bit, or, or sometimes I just do them the way that um, they've been uh, presented to me, it just depends on uh, what I perceive the client is is um, ready for or needs. Um, but I just kept practicing, and um, yeah, so that's kind of where I ended up doing the tuning fork work. Um, yeah. Would you say that with two different techniques, you would get different results? Yes, some of the results are similar in that people tell me that they feel more relaxed, they feel lighter, they feel less burdened, um, they might feel mm, a sense of release or relief. So I get those comments for both of the techniques. Um, People process the biofield tuning, uh, which is the kind of session that, that uh, you experience in a different way than the other one, um, because it has the potential to bring to mind uh, incidents from the past or memories from the past. And, and, and people have, the feedback for me has been that, that people really appreciate that kind of release. Now, I have other clients that uh, are not, clearly, are not ready to process that kind of stuff. So the, the first technique, the sound energy dynamics, from my perspective, is um, it's a very uh, uh, overall... It's no less powerful, but it's a but it's an overall kind of a, a session. We're addressing your whole system, all of your chakras. Uh, we use the meridian system of the body, um, and and so, so it's a very holistic. The biofield method digs a little deeper into one aspect. It addresses the whole system too, but it digs a little deeper into one aspect. And so um, I, I have found clients that are just not ready for that. And um, there are some characteristics with those clients that seem to be similar, but, but everybody's different. And I, uh, I still have a small uh, clientele I'm working on growing it, um, but so I don't have as much experience or as large a clientele as, as other practitioners of, of um, tuning fork work might to draw from. Now, you do um, more than one session. You would say that it, um, it, it grows more. It, uh, maybe that's the wrong expression. Yeah, momentum. There's momentum that's to be gained. 
Often when somebody comes the first time and asks me, well, what do you recommend? How often should I come? Well, it really just depends. But what I like to have people do is come for a, a, a series, like four sessions maybe. It could be once a week. It could be uh, every two weeks. Whatever is right for the, for the person. Uh, but just on a regular basis to come for a, a series because what I've found is that momentum builds. So you, so you have the first session, especially if um, you're, not, uh, you're not yet as perceptive or in tune with your system, your body, um, your field, uh, as, uh, as other people are. But to come for a for three or four sessions regularly because momentum builds. You become, people become more able to um, follow what's going on. They are more in, in tune with their physical body so they can say, oh, I felt, no, you, you did it. You put the fork on my foot, but I, I felt it uh, in my left hip or something like that. Um, so yeah, momentum builds. So. Usually that's what I suggest, but I have people who use this in a whole variety of ways. For me, a full session is about 50 minutes, but I have some people who only want a half an hour. I have one person who's been coming for, I don't know, three or four years now who just wants 20 minutes. Um, and she's one of the ones who was isn't ready to dig as deeply into whatever is in her field um, as some other people. So she, she just wants 20 minutes, usually once a week. Um, so uh, it can, it can be, it can be from my perspective, it can be broken down in a variety of ways. Um, and I just try to meet people where they are, whatever serves really is um, about service, whatever serves the person. Yeah, and it's also about um, intuitively know what a person needs and uh, and go from there. I mean, yes. it can be yes. it can be an interesting journey for some people. At yeah, time. You yeah. Know, maybe it's not for me. I don't. You know, the old idea is that it makes you feel better, and especially mm -hmm. nowadays with everything that's been going on. Yes. And if you can feel more balanced, that's gold. That's absolutely yes. gold. Yes. Now, when you do. Um, you do in-person sessions, but we already found out, or I found out, that you do long-distance sessions, and of course, I was intrigued by that, because that means that anybody can tune in <laughs> to, uh, to uh, your, uh, your balancing, sound balancing uh, from wherever they are in the world, and that we can even do a, um, a session, a group session right here and mm -hmm. right now where everyone can really benefit from. So that was very, uh, very intriguing for me. So if you can explain a little how, how you would do that and how that works for us. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know that we entirely understand why this works. Um, but like a number of things in the in the world today, we don't necessarily need to know why it just works. But um, part of the thought there is that, um, or part of part of the understanding and, and gnosis is that it works. And we live in a in a in a field. We we have our own our own personal field, but that field is part of. Uh, different people call it different things. The information field, the ether, um, you know, what, whatever the words are that one would use to describe this. And, and so there is no uh, little box of time and space. And so through intention, I place, uh, if we're going to do a, a group uh, session, I would create a hologram in my mind's eye on my massage table of the collective body and that body is is uh, me being present with anybody who listens to the call at any or the call in the session at any point in time me being right there with them in real time as they're experiencing it using the forks on the hologram as if it were their 
physical body or their energy field. So it's like, um, it's the same principle as, as prayer working, I think, or uh, if you think of someone and they call you on the phone, those, those things that we call time and space just don't exist in the same way that we have been conditioned to understand them. Um, so I create a hologram. I, I go through the session. I talk through the session, let people know what I'm doing, the forks I'm using, and uh, maybe this is a good time to show people what the forks look like. Is that okay? Of course. Yeah, so I, I use a variety of forks. Um, the sound energy dynamics works directly with the chakras on the body. Uh, it works a little bit in the field, but mostly right with the chakras on the body. And the, the um, basis for this is that it, it, we can envision the chakras as if they were clear crystalline globes. That's just the model that he uses. And because of the electromagnetics of the chakras, uh, uh, patterns, he calls them mandalas. They're just their behavior patterns, their thought patterns, their emotional patterns, tra trauma, old trauma. It's just the, the kind of dirt uh, of our lives, the dust of our lives. It's like static cling. Um, and it, it, you can see that by covering the chakra, the light that the projection from the chakra outward in front and back of the body is dimmed. And so through the, the physics of sound, I can use a fork, which looks like this. I'm not going to strike it yet, but I will in a minute. And, and I can go over the chakra and disrupt that pattern. Just uh, agitate it. And then I can do a pullout, which in energy medicine is always a counterclockwise spiral. And because there is a resonance between the fork and the patterns, those particles will just pull away. And then I stop the fork from vibrating away from the body, and there's no carrier wave between the fork and the chakra, and the particles just will fall away to be repurposed. Nothing new under the sun. So uh, I use unweighted forks. So that's part of the sound energy dynamics um, that I will be doing when we do a group session today. Um, I use a hockey puck to activate an unweighted fork. So I won't do it loudly, but um, you can probably hear that. And it's vibrating. And I'll put the stem end of the fork right on the body, feet, um, and different, different where the chakras are. So I work with the seven chakras plus uh, some smaller ones. And I also use uh, weighted forks. This is a weighted fork. It's a much lower tone. This one happens to be 12 intervals above uh, the original Schumann resonance, the low hum of the earth that we, that's inaudible to us, but uh, can be measured. So this is 12 intervals. I don't know if you can hear this. It does have a low hum. You would be able to hear it if you were here. But if this fork, because it's such a low tone, were um, without these weights, it would have to be really long and it would be unusable. Uh, so again, activate it, place it various places on the body. Uh, yeah. So, and so I would go, when I do the session, distance-wise, I just go through whatever bits and pieces uh, of the information that I have about the gnosis that I have about both systems. And I go through the session as if this hologram were each individual's body on the table. And... Um, I have people tell me they don't feel anything, but the next day, but they feel relaxed. I have, but the next day, oh, there was this project that I've been meaning to do, but I just got up in the morning and did it. Or I've had 
musicians tell me, oh, I, uh, when I went to practice, or when I went to the studio the next day, everything flowed a lot easier. With the distance work, my, my, it's de going to depend on how sensitive or in tune people are. And my sister tell me that I usually just do a virtual foot massage first, just because I can. It's fun. And she tells me that she can feel the tingling in her feet when I, when I do that. Um, so different people have different experiences. Again, the more that a, a person experiences this, the more they are kind of, so to speak, in tune with what to experience because it's a very different kind of a, um, a thing to experience. Uh, right now I'm doing little mini sessions at a local farmer's market and I've been doing that for a couple of years now. It's a great way to meet new people, to invite people to explore more deeply into the work and so I have to, had to find ways to describe to people what this is and why they would be interested in it when more or less most of the people that come by the booth that I have really have no clue. They haven't heard of energy medicine. Maybe they know what the chakras are, maybe not. Um, so that's been fun to, to find language for how to describe it. And I've, I, I'm paired with a massage therapist, so I've just called it vibrational massage. And that often will draw people in, and then I can show them the tuning forks, let them experience it by just uh, putting it on the palm of their hand. Uh, so it's been a lot of fun. So for this uh, distance song to balancing um, as a group, how would we be able to better receive it? It's like relax and close our eyes and just, you know, yeah. we do what we're doing. And for the 20 minutes of that session, we just be quiet, don't do anything and receive. Is that, yeah. is that a yes. good uh, explanation? Yes, that, that's exactly right. I uh, strongly encourage people to relax, close their eyes, when, you, when we close our eyes, all of the uh, visual stimulus is, is gone. And so it allows us to focus more deeply uh, inwardly, which is, will help you perceive um, what's going on with your, with your body and your system. And be curious, just be open, open-minded, be curious, breathe, do belly breaths. Uh, during a session, I may ask someone to take a breath or uh, sometimes uh, shaking, shaking joints a little bit just to help the energy uh, move through. Sometimes um, I, can, I can feel when there's energy built up. And so you may hear me breathe deeply just to, just to release and uh, let the energy dissipate. Um, we had talked about having an intention for this session. That's, that's always uh, something that I offer to people. You can have an intention. You could just be open. Um, but the intention that we had talked about was to people. Oh, we lost sound again. Uh, with the Cindy, session. Cindy, if I may interrupt you a little, yeah. you started talking about uh, the intention and we lost completely the sound. So, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, so if you, if, you can, if you can repeat that and uh, sure. if you're ready for it, I'm ready for it. So go okay. ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I was going to say maybe one more thing about the difference between the tuning forks and the bowls and bells, if I can. But um, yeah, the intention. We had you and I had talked about was that people receive a sense of calm uh, from the session, and it was interesting to me because I did a distance session for my sister this morning, and with no prompting from me, she asked for. That's what her intention was. So I think that one might be right on. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I was just going to say a lot of times people ask me about the difference between the bowls or bells or gongs and the tuning. 
And um, the sound field for bowls and bells is very diffuse. It's very wide and very diffuse. Um, and so when you're in it, you are bathed in sound. With the tuning forks, I can be very directive. I can really pinpoint right in a particular place. I can, um, I can when I'm over the body, whatever forks are uh, right underneath there, uh, or whatever, I'm sorry, whatever organs are right underneath there, um, uh, the sound field will go right there. There is someone coming to my door, Tony. I'm so sorry. Can I pa Can we pause the recording for a minute? Yeah, I will pause it. Unexpected. I am so sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, Cindy is back. I'm back. So go <laughs> ahead, Cindy. Okay. So I'm going to set up this session, and I'm. Uh, what I have to do is put my computer up on the uh, table over here, the massage table. Uh, I just encourage people to lie down. Uh, when I, I'll strike a fork here so you can adjust your volume. Uh, so just make sure the volume is, is um, at, a, at a level that is comfortable for you. I don't suggest listening with headphones on unless you turn the volume really low. Um, yeah, but I'll be describing what I do as I go along and uh, just be curious. So our intention for this session is just that a uh, sense of calm, the frequency of calm be strengthened in the body. And the way that I'm going to start this, like I said, uh, I start all my sessions with a little foot massage. So just close your eyes, imagine that um, that you're, someone's giving you a foot massage and I'm going to start with the right foot and I just come down around the ankle, around the heel and up the sides of the foot and just firmly, but gently bending toes of the right foot toward me and then away from me, standing at the feet, just up the up the middle of the foot and then the left foot same thing just down around the heel around the ankle and up the sides and then bending toward and away and toward and away okay there we go all right now i have my finger right in a point that is between the pad of the foot and the arch of the foot right in there it's a grounding point that uh, deep vibration just penetrate the foot, penetrate the bones, the muscles, the tissues, all the cells. This is a very comforting tone. It's just like uh, the hum of the earth. And then on the left foot, same thing, right in that point. Our feet do a lot of work for us. And so we're just going to give them a little loving attention here. And then same, same thing on the left knee. I have this fork just resting against the side of the left knee. A joint carries our body so many places, bending. Let's let that frequency vibrate in. Use the bone for this so, because bone carries, sound carries very well in bone. And the right knee, just let it vibrate in. Follow your leg bones up and down. And then right hip bone. Again, vibration carries around through the whole pelvic cradle. 
up into your spine. It's that hum of the earth. And then left hip bone. Same thing. And then right over the heart chakra, resting right on the sternum. Let that vibration flow down into the ribs and up into the collarbone. Then there's a long meridian point, kind of where the shoulder and the collarbone meet. And so I've got the fork right there in that long point on the right side. Again, just let the vibration just penetrate into your physical form. And then right on the, the uh, bone, that's the bony point right on the top of the shoulder, let that low hum go down your arm bones into your collarbone. I'm going to do the open palm of your right hand. That's where we have a smaller chakra. That's what people use when they do Reiki. That's that chakra. And then the left, on the left side, that long point on the left side. Same thing. Wherever that meridian is traveling in your, in your body, the sound will be carried. One of the techniques that I use uses all of, uh, uh, we run energy through all the meridians of the body. And then right on the top of the left shoulder, just as I did on the right side, carry down the bones of your arm into your collarbone. And then the palm of the left hand. The reason I do this fork this way is just to say to the body, hey, we're going to do some energy work. There we go. And then right on the crown chakra, top of your skull, feel it, feel that low vibration go into the skull, down into the bones of the ear, through the skull, into the brain, into your brain tissue. Do it one more time. Just vibrating, a slow vibration, slow hum. All right. Next fork you're going to hear. What I'm going to do is work with an energy center that's by your feet. That is called the Earth Star. You're going to hear the fork. And this, this energy center sometimes gets tucked up a little bit between, between your feet when we get stressed. So I'm going to just position it about six inches below, below your feet. And we're just going to run this one pure tone. It happens to be 174 hertz. Just going to brighten and clear our connection to, to the mother. We want it to be, want to be connected to the mother. We want to be here now in our physical lives, be able to receive. So you, you can help this process by putting your attention on the soles of your feet, just bringing the energy down for the moment. Strengthening this connection. I like to think about being both grounded and centered. Um, and this is the grounding part. If you can get outside with your bare feet. If you have a day like I do sometimes when you can't get outside as, as much as you'd like, you can put your finger on that point that I was using earlier, right at the, between the pad of your foot and the 
arch. You can ground yourself many different ways. Send this vibration with intention up, up the central channel in your toroidal form. Our, our energy field is in the form of a torus, like an apple or a pumpkin. I know a pumpkin's hollow inside, but if you imagine a pumpkin with a hollow tube up the center, just run that frequency up and out the top of your head. Get some flow going around the outside of that energy field. All right. Okay, and then we're going to bring the energy uh, down into the earth, just to ground. So there's flow, it's going up and around and down. And we're gonna complete this flow in a minute. It's down, however you, however you image yourself being grounded, roots or just bare feet on the ground. going to come up to an, an energy center that's right above the head. We'll do the same thing. going to position it. And I'm just going to send this frequency, intention down the central channel, lighting up the earth star. So we have a flow. This is a little difficult sometimes to imagine, but flow going upward and downward at the same time through that central channel out and around. It's a flowing in our energy field. So energy is always in motion. Okay, and then I'm gonna connect this, this uh, energy center into the heavens, into the divine. However that is for you, this is your connection. This is the centeredness. So we have groundedness and centeredness. Fully present in our lives. Able to be in the now moment. Okay. So I'm gonna begin working with the chakras at the feet. These are smaller chakras, and I do that by placing the tine of this fork that I'm using. There'll be a different fork for each chakra. So I'm placing the handle or the tine of it right in that uh, spot on the right foot that I've talked about before. I'm going to do that a couple times. This is a finer vibration. It's just flowing in wherever that meridian, there's a meridian point, uh, is what that point is, wherever that meridian goes. And then the tip of the big left, right toe, just placing it right there. And the tip of the big right toe again. What we're doing right now is, is um, agitating or disrupting those patterns that I talked about. And I'm at the left foot, handle right in that spot. On the left foot, that meridian spot again. We're disrupting those mandalas, those energetic patterns, so we can pull them off. Sort of like washing your windows. This is intentionally a non-diagnostic technique uh, we don't really care where the dirt came from on our windows. We just want it clean on the tip of the left foot. Okay. 
uh, toe, tip of the left toe. All right, and then doing a counterclockwise spiral away from the body and stopping the fork. And the particles just fall away. Okay, now I'm working with the root chakra. Painting uh, horizontally across the body with a fork. Just kind of dragging it right, almost touching physical form. So whatever organs are underneath the fork are getting a swath of this frequency, just back and forth. Noting any place there's resistance. And right over the chakra, I'm doing a pull out counterclockwise, same thing. And I stop the fork from vibrating. And then the sacral, just doing the same kind of thing, just kind of painting across the body over the area where the sacral chakra is. And that includes all the organs underneath it, underneath the fork. Okay, I'm doing a pull out and stopping the fork. And then solar plexus, same thing. I'm not actually touching the fork to the body at this point, it's just right above. And the reason for that is that there's more soft tissue here than other places on the body. Just again, noting where there might be any resistance and going a little slower. There's a, I'm, I'm per perceiving that there's more resistance or more slower, denser energy over this, around this uh, solar plexus chakra than the other ones. I'm gonna spend a little more time here. And then I'm going to do the, I will do the pull out again, stop the fork. And the heart, actually I'm putting the handle of the fork right on the sternum. So that vibration goes right into the heart chakra, right into your physical heart, carries through the sternum. Feel that, imagine feeling that vibration it's carrying throughout your body. So that is agitating and then I do the same kind of sweeping across the body, across the area of the heart chakra. Okay, I'm gonna spend a little extra time here, just kind of going slow. And then doing the pull out and stopping the fork. And now I'm at the throat chakra, so just gently the handle of the fork right on the throat. Just feel that penetrating your throat, the vibration, the voice box, your larynx, your pharynx, all the, all the passageways through which food and water and oxygen flow. And then doing the same sweeping kind of motion, 
right over the chakra. And pull out and then stop eating. Down into your eyes, the ears, and then just doing the same sweeping across it with the heart, the throat, the third eye, and the crown with this method. We're not so much clearing them as sort of dusting them off, activating them. Our higher senses have been Slowed down, dimmed, ways of perceiving the world or everything. We need expanded ways of perceiving the world. So we just did the pull out and stop the fork. And then I'm at the crown, right on the crown handle, right on the crown chakra. Just letting the vibration ring through. And one more time. And deep into the brain. And then doing a sweep. This time across the top of the head and down by the ears. And pull out. And then I'm using two forks, two forks at once now, and I have one tone in one left ear and one tone in your right ear, and just kind of switching them back and forth. It's a little right and left brain hemisphere balancing kind of thing. It's like um, a pulsing of the frequencies, just kind of back and forth between your ears. And then also I'll do a pull out with this. And then stop the forks from by. And then did it twice. Now I'm back at your feet. And then the last thing that I'll do here for this session is I have another weighted fork, which is a uh, one of the frequencies from the Fibonacci spiral. And I think of the Fibonacci spiral, which is the which is the Nautilus chambers or the spiral on a sunflower, is the ordering kind of principle of the universe. So I'm just going to run that through. It's called columning, and I take it from your feet toward the ceiling. So out in the projection of the chakra and knees, just columning up, running this, this ordering frequency through that, that projection, root chakra, sacral chakra, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, and crown. Okay, so I'm back at your feet, and I have my fingers uh, right in that, in that point. Just gonna hold there for a minute. Just take a deep breath in, and out. And that's a little taste of 
the distance sessions uh, that are possible with this work. That is quite interesting. <laughs> I like it when you said that, like you use it as, you see it as if it is a hologram. I mean, there are so many things possible that, you know, we, we don't underst understand and, and maybe we shouldn't. Just take it as it is. And uh, I think that is the beauty for us and go with it. Yeah. It's about ex what you experience anyway. And so what do you experience, you know? Um, does it work? Does it not work? Well, how can we tell? Sometimes we can't, you know, the, the shifts are subtle sometimes. Yeah, that's that's actually the same as with taking medication. Oh, I got better because of it. And it's like, well, you don't know if you have gotten better if you, have, if you wouldn't take it. So we don't right. know. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes, and ultimately, these are tools. There are many, many, many tools that we can, we, I think, are still using to help ourselves. Are they necessary? No, but I think they're helpful at this point in time. Well, they may actually be more important than we, than we, than we understand right now. I think that's true. Yes, yes. I think it, everything is so out of balance. Mm -hmm. Everything is so distorted. Right, yeah, right. Every little thing from sounds, from nature, it, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what would be, you mentioned the frequencies and you mentioned the number. Can you say more about it? Because we hear about certain frequencies like in music that are great for us. Otherwise, uh, others are kind of disturbing. I have that with a lot of music. Yeah, I can't, I can't even listen to and other and other sounds. They feel, they actually do feel calming. Yeah, you know, I think when they are the pure tones, I think it's the combination. A lot of times, it's just my perspective. It's the combination of frequencies in some of that music that's very disruptive. When I think it's the pure tones, just one single tone, the body, our bodies really like that. That gives our bodies a lot of feedback. And our, our, our systems, our body-mind system is, is capable of much kind of self-correction, self-balancing. It just has to have some feedback. And so when we give that with the pure tones, um, it can really be helpful to the body. And I will say, I don't, uh, I'm thinking about the low, some of the low tones, like maybe in some of the music, the heavy music, like the heavy metal music, um, or a, a car that has their, I, I don't know what you call it, their woofer things. And you can just, I, I have to say to my husband, let's get away from this because I it hurts, it's painful when it's so loud and it's so low. However, so the weighted forks are the forks that people really um, gravitate toward. They're very comforting. So I don't know. I would just be my take is that it's it's maybe the volume and the combination that makes those um, that that music or that you know that that car that has its volume low and way too loud uncomfortable for us. Yeah, it makes me feel nauseated. So. Yeah. Yeah. The, the interesting thing is that when you hear like with a piano or accordion, I played accordion way, way back, mm -hmm. and, or even with a guitar, when you hear a false note, you kind of cringe. It's like, yeah. yeah. So it's, it sounds can do a lot for you. Yeah. And if the, if a string is out of tune on a guitar, um, that, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't sound good. Um, yeah. Yeah, so mm, that would be kind of my take on that. Yeah, well, it, it's uh, it's been an amazing session uh, again, Sandy, and oh, good. We'll probably do it again in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Great, yeah, we can, and I I will work on making a recording of a longer session. Uh, maybe, you know, with a little, me talking a little bit less. I don't know if, how it was for people with how much I was describing what I was doing, but I can be minimal about that. 
Um, and we can do different intentions. We can do different things. I can do different kinds of work just so that people have something to listen to. I've certainly used things like that uh, in the past, and they've been very helpful to me. So. Well, the, the thing was that we lost sound a few times, and I was like, okay. did we lose sound, or is he just very, very quiet? You know? uh, yeah. We lost sound for a few seconds about five times, so I apologize to everyone who, is, who has been listening. It's not something that we can prevent, and it's no use for me to stop the recording. Right. So we, I just let it go. So it's um, it is what it is. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Um, it's still it's still all good. Yeah. And um, I'm happy um, to have you here, and um, I can only hope that people uh, listening to it are enjoying it. I will put your email address in the um, for YouTube in the show notes. It will also be put up on Podbean. I, I think I can put it in there also. And so that people can uh, can reach you directly and um, with your website. And now, of course, I forgot what the website was. Uh, it's, um, it's a... It's soundenergy.com, but I'll have to, maybe I can send it to you again. I, it's not easy for me. It's a, kind of a long title, and it's uh, I'm unpracticed in explaining where it is to people, unfortunately. Uh, I, I, I know you sent it to me, so I will find it, and I put it in. Yeah, the yeah. It, so it's, people it's, can it's, look at what you're yeah. offering. And what I yeah. absolutely love that you are doing, and I saw that on your website, like me, you work for donations, and um, I think that is just a beautiful way of, um, of doing this. Yes, yes, so, yes. So thank you very much, Sandy. And um, yeah, what, can I, what else can I say? Thank you. Yeah. No, you're very welcome. And thank you for the invitation. Um, it's been a, an amazing journey with the Tuning Forks and with sound. And if anyone is interested in more conversation, I'm always open to um, speaking with anyone. So however I can serve. Great. Thanks, Sandy. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.